Hello friends, uh, today we will study the design of voltage control oscillator. Uh, voltage control oscillator means the output frequency should depend upon input voltage. Now, for output frequency to depend upon input voltage, we will design the circuit. What does this mean? Which, this means that if uh, V in increases, my output frequency should increase or if V in increases, my output frequency should decrease. So this is the principle of voltage control oscillator that output frequency it should depend upon input voltage. So we will design voltage control oscillator using the op amps. So let's design voltage control oscillator. First, let me will design uh, the circuit and then we will understand its working. This is op amp number 1 and this is op amp number 2. See, this is output and this I am taking the feedback and I am connecting to the, I'm connecting the feedback to positive, to positive terminal. This is 1 kilo. This is 1 kilo. And this is how it is connected and uh, this potential I will mark it as VG and uh, this VG is connected to gate of the MOSFET this is a MOSFET it's mark M1 and uh, the drain drain is connected to negative negative of op amp 1 all right and then this is the capacitor the output of op amp 1 is connected as the inverting terminal of op amp 2 like this let's mark this point as v0 1 and this potential has VC and uh, then the circuit goes like this this is 2R and uh, here 1R is there R and uh, here I will apply VN this again I will divide it by we will see the working of this then you will understand why I am dividing it like this we will see the working of this this is again 1 kilo 1 kilo and this is connected to positive this is the circuit for voltage control oscillator now what here uh, this circuit signifies is that the, if I change this input voltage the output frequency will change ok now see uh, let's analyze the circuit. See, this this potential is V naught by two, right? This potential is V naught by two, and this V naught by two is connected to uh, gate of MOSFET, right? And let's mark this twenty volt. Saturation voltage is 20 volt and 0 volt. This is the saturation voltage of voltage control oscillator. Right now, if it is an oscillator, definitely it is working in positive feedback. And we can see also see here this loop when you calculate the loop gain, it is positive. We can start it from here positive, positive, and positive. This means this work, this is working in positive feedback, and similarly, this is also working in positive. Feedback positive feedback and then we will get a voltage control oscillator now see let's assume let's assume v naught to be plus 20 volts ok if v naught is plus 20 volts vg will become 10 volts if vg is 10 volt this MOSFET will be on because this is 10 volt is quite high so this means this MOSFET will turn on and it will act like a switch 
so m1 is working as a switch okay now so this voltage is divided by this two has this current is zero if this current is zero this voltage will divide so again this point is v1 v in by two that means positive terminal is given as v in by two now okay this uh, is working as negative feedback or positive feedback why we can check also see start it from start from here this is positive and then again a loop so this is a working as a negative feedback not positive feedback okay so in negative feedback uh, we can apply virtual ground concept so this potential will become v in by 2 and this will become v in by 2 okay now we got the load voltages let's mark this as i1 this current has i2 and this current has i3 okay now from here i1 is given as v in minus v in by 2 divided by 2r which will become v in by 4r equation number 1 okay now i i2 i2 is this current which is v in by 2 divided by 2 r y because this mosfet is working as a closed switch therefore this ground will come this side and this will become v in by 2 minus 0 divided by r so i2 is v in by 2 r now i will apply a nodal equation here that means i1 plus i3 is equal to i2 Now from the diagram we see that I1 plus I3 is equal to I2, right? And I3 I can write it as I2 minus I1. From here I can calculate the value of I3. I2 is V in by 2R and I1 is V in by 4R. From here I3 will be equal to V in by 4R. Right. Now this is the constant current which is flowing through the capacitor and if a constant current flows through the capacitor my capacitor will charge linearly. Whenever through a capacitor if the current is flowing constant it is not changing then my capacitor charges linearly. Okay, So I3 will be equal to C dVc by dt. I is equal to C dVc by dt that I am using so v in by 4r is equal to c dvc is v01 minus v in by 2 divided by t from this equation i can calculate v01 so v in by 4 rct plus v in by 2 will be equal to v01 now uh, this is the potential v01 we got now v01 is connected to negative terminal of opam2 and opam2 is working as a switch uh, smith trigger right and the working of smith trigger is if negative terminal exceeds the positive terminal my view switches right uh, see if uh, v01 uh, from the equation we come to know that y is equal to mx plus c this is some linearly charging voltage that means v01 this is t this is v01 it will charge linearly i am not marking this as zero that means if this point is not zero it will start from some c value but just to simplify i am not marking here i am starting from this point only now till what point it will charge definitely it will charge up to some point right and what point is that this point is vg why when v01 exceeds vg my vo will switch and if vo switches mosfet gets off and because mosfets get uh, mosfet gets off the current through capacitor changes and this equation will also change so let's see how it switches see i'm drawing the smith trigger again this is the smith trigger 
this is minus this is plus this is vo this is 1 kilo this is 1 kilo and this terminal is connected to this point this is v naught by 2 which is also equal to vg this is 20 volt this is ground plus and minus v set and this point is connected as v0 1 this is the only this is only smith trigger part of my voltage control oscillator now to switch v01 should be greater than vg right and v01 is v in by 4 rc t plus v in by 2 it should be greater than 10 volt now whenever this condition is fulfilled my vo switches to vo switches to 0 volts right now let's see the circuit again when vo switches to 0 volts see when vo switches to 0 volts means this potential will become 0 when this potential becomes 0 my mosfet turns off when my mosfet turns off the current through this branch will become 0 that means i i2 will become 0 so let's do the analysis when i2 becomes 0 you understood right when vo becomes 0 this potential becomes 0 and when this potential becomes 0 my mosfet turns off that means i2 becomes 0 No. when vo is equal to 0 vg becomes 0 and if vg becomes 0 i2 becomes i2 becomes 0 because m1 is off m1 is off right now from the diagram we see that i1 will become equal to i3 because i2 is 0 and i1 is uh, v in by 4r and that will be equal to i3 now now the current through the capacitor is reversed its direction earlier the current was flowing from v01 to uh, then uh, 2 v in by 2 now the current is flowing from v in by 2 to v01 right the current has switch the current has switch switched its direction now capacitor first it was charged from uh, another polarity now its polarity will change now again the capacitor uh, it will discharge it will, it will kind of discharge or it will change its polarity right now let's again calculate v01 from this current again i is equal to c d v c by dt and i will be again v in by 4r and this will be c and d v c will be v in by 2 minus v01 by t from here again i can calculate v01 which will be v in 4r c t to v in by 2 minus v01 and v01 will become minus v in 4 rc t plus v in by 2 now this is the equation when v switches to 0 volt now this is again a linearly uh, linearly charging equation but here my slope is negative that means v01 will now start to fall earlier it was rising now it will for. So let's see the diagram of V01 how it is. Now, see, this is T and this is V01. It was charging first and then it will discharge. Again, it will charge and again it will discharge. Why? Because again it will discharge to some point at which Vg will become again greater to V01 and if Vg becomes greater than V01, Vo will again become plus 20 volt and again it will start charging and again it will charge to some point then again Vo switches and if again Vo switches then again uh, Vo switches to 0 volt and again my current changes and it will again discharge. 
it is charging with slope b in by 4rc it is charging with slope b in by 4rc okay now see this is time period t and this potential is uh, this point is t by 2 comma 0 and this point is t by 2 comma 10 volts y because it was charged up to vg and vg was 10 volts right now we will calculate the frequency from here i can calculate the slope of this 4rc and slope of this line will be by 2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 this point this point is 0 comma 0 so by 2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 from here vn will be 40 rc which will be equal to 2 by t from here t will be equal to t will be equal to 80 rc by b right and t can be written as 1 by f which is 80 rc by b and b in, uh, f will be equal to v in by 80 rc this is the frequency now f is equal to v in by 80 rc c what we started uh, what we started uh, deciding uh, what what was the motive of designing a voltage control oscillator the frequency which should depend on the input voltage see it is depending on the input voltage my r will be some constant you can take one kilo ohm and c will be constant you can take one, mi one microfarad then this term will become constant and from here i can see f is directly proportional to v motive for vco this is what we 